Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Andrew Wolfline from Tempest. We're pleased to have everyone join today's webinar on why exporters should invoice in foreign currency. We're pleased to be collaborating on today's webinar with Shipping Solutions, a specialist in export documentation and compliance. And so we're delighted to have uh, the opportunity to share this information for exporters and hope that you find it helpful. So today's agenda, we're going to cover four things. First of all, why you should consider invoicing your overseas import clients in foreign currency, foreign exchange volatility that will have an impact on the way you look at uh, invoicing in foreign currency, and then basically the nuts and bolts of how you go about invoicing an overseas buyer in foreign currency, and then just more broadly how you can manage that risk through hedging. So. Uh, these will be the four topics we'll cover today, and I'm just going to jump right in. Um, first of all, you know, why, why should an exporter consider invoicing their overseas buyers in, in foreign currency? Well, as you know, most exporters are invoicing in dollars, and what, what we believe is that you can do both. You can still invoice in dollars, but you should also invoice in foreign currency. And the reason why, there are a few reasons why you might want to consider invoicing in both dollars and foreign currency. The first is, you know, the world is much more of a global marketplace and you need to make doing business with your company easy. And other competitors that you're going up against are trying to do the same thing. So if, if they've differentiated themselves with a dual invoice in the home currency and the foreign currency, it's just, it's easier to do business with them. If you, if you think about the competition, you know, on the left side here, we see sort of the example of U.S. exporters, all the dollars, uh, American flags representing U.S. exporters. You can differentiate yourself if you invoice in both dollars and foreign currency and other U.S. competitors are only invoicing in dollars. So you've made it easier to do business with your company. Conversely, uh, on, the, on the right side, it's sort of the same picture, but in this case, you have foreign competitors who are also trying to sell into the import markets that you're targeting. And they are, in many cases, invoicing in their home currency and the currency of the buyers. So you need to match that. You want to match what foreign competitors are doing, and you want to stand out from what American companies, other American companies aren't doing. So you know, the competitive landscape is just something you want to keep in mind when you're considering how you want to invoice and be paid for your, your products that you're exporting. Um, really, if you can invoice in both, ultimately you just want to make it a, a, a way that it's easier to j help drive sales, increase your sales. And um, it's just one more thing that makes it easy to do business with you and can be a positive thing to help drive your sales up. Now, the, the challenge of doing this is that if, if you have invoiced in foreign currency and your overseas buyers accept that, uh, currency, as you all know, and we're going to look at it in just a minute here, it can be volatile. It's the value of the dollar against foreign currency is just changing all the time. And if, if this isn't managed, your profit margin can be, can be uh, eroded. So this is the challenge of doing it. Um, and to understand this, you have to just understand volatility. There are many different forces that impact currencies, uh, politics, inflation, interest rates. We're seeing in the UK, Brexit, political stability is having an impact. Um, terms of trade, the trade war with China is, create, creates volatility. So there are a lot of these different factors that impact currency volatility. And um, it can be managed, but you just have to first you know, be aware of it. Um, just a quick example, the British pound since the beginning of this year from its high to its low has fallen almost 10% against the dollar. And uh, so this would make your, your, your goods more expensive. Um, similarly, the euro, its fall, it's, it has fallen almost 5% against the dollar since January in the eurozone. So this, this is just two of the major currencies just showing uh, you know, high degree of volatility between 10 and 5% movements. Um, and when you think just about currency uh, volatility and the strengthening and weakening of a currency, right, obviously this, what I'm depicting here is the, the euro 
exchange rate against the dollar. And as the dollar gets stronger here going up, that's great for U.S. importers because it costs less to import foreign goods. But it's bad for exporters because their goods, your goods, are, are more expensive overseas as the dollar strengthens. And conversely, as the dollar is weakening, um, that's great for U.S. importers because it's less costly to buy. It's bad for importers because it's more expensive, excuse me, to buy from overseas suppliers. And it's better for exporters because your goods are less expensive overseas. So the one thing that's certain is that the currency is moving all the time up and down and there are trends that are driving it one way or the other. But it can impact, it can have a, you know, a very positive or very negative impact. But, you know, your role as a company, you're, you're not playing currency markets. You're trying to sell your product at a profit. You just need to manage this volatility. And um, the way you could invoice an importer in foreign currency, I'm going to just sort of walk through the nuts and bolts of this and uh, just to give you a sense of how this can be done. I think sometimes U.S. exporters think it's, it's just too complicated. I'm just going to bill in dollars and let the overseas importer deal with, you know, pay me in dollars. Uh, you're forcing the entire conversion on them. And uh, as I said earlier, you know, competitors may be giving them a choice to pay in their local currency. So it's easier to do business with a competitor. So the, the way you could invoice in foreign currency, in this example, we're saying that uh, your product is $10,000 and you want to sell a product for $10,000 to a, a European buyer. So what you would do is you would get an indicative rate uh, of how many dollars, how many euros you would need to get $10,000. And this, this screenshot, this is just a screenshot from a, our online system. Very simple people, you know, someone can log into a system, to a bank system, to a, a financial provider system, and just get the rate, just get a quick rate, and you'll immediately have the exchange rate. And um, now this would, you would want to make this indicative because if you give a, a pro forma invoice, today, but the buyer doesn't say, yes, I want your goods for another couple of weeks. Well, of course, you know, the rate's changing all the time. So this is, this is indicative, but it gives them a sense, okay, I can either pay $10,000 or just a little over 9,000 euros. And uh, both amounts could be put on a pro forma invoice and you can stipulate that if the buyer wants foreign currency, you know, they need to, you need to finalize that with them at the time they're ready to commit to the order. So, in this second step, we're assuming the importer, they want, your, they want your product, they want to pay euros, two weeks have gone by from when they got your pro forma invoice, now they're ready to commit, what's the final price? Again, the rate can be updated. And in this example, uh, the, the euro has weakened slightly, just very slightly, just a few points. So it's going to cost 9,006 euro to uh, complete the order. And uh, I'll just go back to this slide here. It was gonna be 9,001 two weeks prior when you quoted, today it's 9,006, just as in this example. So um, this is the firm price that you'll sell your product. And if they've agreed, if they want the product at this price, what you would do is on the final invoice, you would put the 9,006.57 euros, and um, that's the price they're going to pay to you and this is the part where you need to manage that volatility. And I'll go in in a, little, in a little bit further in the presentation. I'll talk more about forward contracts, some of the more specifics of it. But basically, you want to lock in this 9,006.57 euros. You want to sell that today with a future delivery. Uh, into the future. A forward uh, is simply selling currency or buying currency at a date in the future. And um, basically, there are one of two ways you can do it. Let's just say in this example, today is the 25th of September. Your terms are 30 days. So you know that the importer will pay you uh, on October 25th. So you can get a specific rate for October 25th, and on that day, basically, if you have 30-day terms, the buyer, the importer, will deliver to you 9,006.57. Euro. Um, if you don't, if you have, say, for example, 60-day terms, and you don't know exactly when the importer is going to pay you, you can buy another type of forward that's 
called a window forward, and it gives the uh, it gives you some flexibility. So anywhere between October 25th and November 25th, that 30-day period, the importer can pay you all or portions of the invoice. Just by the 25th of November, they have to have paid you the full amount that they owe. And um, the last step of this, basically, on the day that the funds are due, um, the importer delivers to you the 9,006 euro 57. Now I put a little I put a little asterisk here because um, you don't need to have foreign bank accounts to receive this euro. Um, this can be done in the U.S. It can be processed through you know uh, through companies that that specialize in this through a bank through companies like Tempest and others that do this. So that the euro or pounds or yen or Swiss franc any of the major currencies you're dealing with they can be received in on your behalf and you know we, we call those holding balances this is just an example of holding balances the funds can come in and can be held and so basically on the 25th of october your euros arrive and they're converted to ten thousand dollars which is the price we agreed on september 25th so from your perspective you get ten thousand dollars and that was what you wanted to sell for so, so, so you're, you, you haven't, you've mitigated all of the currency risk. The window forward just gives you a little more flexibility of when, when the funds come in. And these can be structured based on your payment terms. So it can be net 15 days. It just, it's really, it's very flexible. Now, one thing, um, you know, you might say is, well, if I get the indicative rate, it, you know, today, I could just pad it. I could just pad it and then just let them pick and I don't even care if they send me euros or dollars. Um, you could do that, but if you're going to pad it, you would have to pad it five or 10% depending on your payment terms. So the, the problem with just padding it and not, not hedging your risk is that your euro price will be uncompetitive. So it's, you're going to be quoting an uncompetitive price because you've put on extra margins just to to protect yourself against currency volatility. By, by getting a forward, there's no cost to buy a forward. It's just giving you a rate today for the future so that you've locked in your, your profit margin on your product and you're neutral on whether you receive $10,000 or you receive 9,006 euro and 57 cents. So it's, that's sort of the nuts and bolts of how you do it. Um, if, you, if you have a buyer that's ready to buy, uh, and they don't need a pro forma invoice, you can just get the current rate and do, basically go, I'm going to go back here, go start here at step two. Just if they're ready to buy, they know what your product is, they're ready to place an order, you can also get a firm price and lock, lock that in. The important thing is to lock in the rate uh, that you've guaranteed to your buyer with your financial provider through, through a forward. So that's, that's sort of the nuts and bolts of how to get a price, uh, share the price with your buyer, and then and then lock in the lock in that price with your financial provider. Um, and just more broadly, I wanted to talk just about uh, managing risk and hedging hedging exposure and some of these tools, just to give you a little more of a definition. Um, but you know, a lot of times people think, oh, hedging, I, hedging, it's, that's like speculation. It's you know, we're not a hedge fund. We're not, we're not uh, speculators. And, and hedging is just simply another word for insurance. All you're doing is protecting your profit. So you would never drive a car without insurance. You, you would never buy a house without insurance. You would never want to invoice in foreign currency without a hedge because you've just, you've just done, you've just guaranteed your, you've, you've secured your profit margin when you hedge the currency that you're going to be receiving. Um, I wanted to hear explain a fixed dated forward. All that is is really it's a contract that, in this case, as an exporter, you would you would have a, a set rate to sell currency at the rate today, and um, and it's they can go out as far as 12 months. So if you have uh, multiple shipments from a uh, you know to an importer, you can cover all of those under a forward, and um, you know that you can break it into the chunks of, of when they would 
when they would be delivering the funds to you. But it's simply, you get a rate today for the future. It protects your profit margin. You don't have to put up really any cash now, and there's no, there's no cost to you to book the Ford. Now, the, the only thing, a forward rate is slightly different than today's rate because there's the, the, the cost of, of time into the future. But you, that's a known price right here in this example. You, you would know that at the time you're booking it. So fixed dated forwards, it's very simple the way they work in this example. Uh, 100,000 euros being bought at this rate today of 113. The value dates November 31st. So when November 31st rolls around, $100,000 is delivered and, and, and $113,000 is paid. The important thing about a fixed date for it is it's exactly that. It's a fixed date. It's one day. So it, it has to deliver on the 31st of November. When you know the exact amount, when your uh, overseas importer is going to be paying you and they definitely are going to pay you on a certain day, a fixed date for it is, is a helpful tool. Um, the other one, it just gives more flexibility. It's what's called a window, a window forward. Again, it's a binding contract where, where currency can be bought or sold. Again, as an exporter, you would be selling the currency. Um, they can go out as far as 12 months. And the nice thing about them is you, you don't have to, it doesn't have to close on one specific value date. There can be a window period. So in this example, uh, saying 100,000 euro and it'll settle between October 31st and December 30th. There can be multiple, it can, it can, it can come in in increments. So it doesn't all have to settle in one amount. It can settle 10,000 euro, then 20, then 30. It just will depend uh, on the, on the cash flows in the particular situation you have. Again, there's no, there's no cost to do it. And, um, it, it also, again, protects your profit margin because you know the cost you're going to be selling the foreign currency at. And this just depicts how this works using, again, an example of 100,000 euro. Um, it's booked today at a rate of 115. The value dates the end of the year, and there's a three-month window that opens in the beginning of October. So then the 10th of October, the first drawdown happens for 20,000 euro, and that's at a cost of, of $23,000 given the exchange rate. Uh, a month later and change on the 15th of November, another euro 10,000 is drawn, uh, and that costs 11,500. In December, mid-December, another 30,000 euro, and then at the end of December, the final piece, 40,000 euro. So it's just a flexible way to manage cash flows either coming in or going out. So um, it's, it just gives you some flexibility when you don't know exactly when an overseas buyer may be paying you. And what I wanted to sort of walk you through was a case study, a small case study um, of a fish client that we have a seafood distributor they're in New York and they supply their fish to Canada. And um, they are paid in Canadian dollars. And um, they were going to receive in this particular case, 264,000 Canadian dollars, but not all in one chunk. It was going to come in in two chunks. So the first chunk was the 25% of, the, of this amount of money was gonna come in within four months and the remaining, the balance, 75% was going to come in no later than 10 months. So this client wanted to figure out how to manage this, this incoming Canadian dollars from their, their, their exports of their, the fish they sold to the Canadian, to the Canadian uh, restaurants. So they had this surplus capital. So they wanted to figure out how they could maximize the value and uh, before they converted it to U.S. dollars. So, you know, one of the things I think is important you know, to develop a strategy, to, to talk through what's going to happen, what, what the scenarios are, so you can optimize, you know, how you structure a, a proper a proper hedge. So in this case, we knew that 25%, about 66,000 Canadian dollars, would come in uh, somewhere uh, in in within a four month period. So the forward was set up to go from three to five months, so that if it came in before the four months or a little bit afterwards. It could come in at any point during that time. And the balance, 198,000 Canadian, was also done as a separate window forward that opened in nine months and closed in 11 months. So 
in each of those window forwards, it was bracketed around when the funds were expected at four months and at 10 months. So those, those, those windows were set up a, a one month on either side. So um, this allowed them to take advantage of interest rate differences between these currencies, and they got a, a very good exchange rate. Um, so they, they really, they maximized their receivables um, versus just selling the currency the day it came in. So I just want to put some numbers around that. So in this case study with this, this client, you know, they, they bought two forwards um, at this price, 68,000 at, at the rate of 132 selling Canadian. And uh, the second forward, 198,000 Canadian at a rate of 134. Um, so at month four, they received 68,000, and that was converted to U.S. dollars 51,515. And in month 10, uh, the balance of the Canadian came in, and that was then converted to dollars for 147,761. So um, there. This benefited them by almost three thousand dollars, and the the reason how that why why they benefited was because if they had done nothing and they had just waited and sold the Canadian dollars when they came in as it came into their account, uh, the rates at that time were worse than what they they booked the forward at. So they they um, they got more dollars in each each at month four and at month ten versus just waiting. Um, until the money's arrived and converting immediately. So um, that was, you know, that worked to their benefit and it, it just, you know, that improved their, their profit margin. So it's just an example. Um, this particular example uses two, two window forwards. Many exporters can just use one if they know if there's just one payment, if they know the exact date, a fixed forward works fine. If there's some uncertainty of exactly when the funds will arrive, the window forward will work well. And I think the important thing to, to stress for exporters is, you know, you're in the business of shipping your products, making a profit margin on your product. You're, you're, not, you're not in the business of currency speculating. We're, we deal with currency every day, every day, and we're also not in the business of currency speculating. We're just fulfilling client orders. Um, so we're, it's, it, you know, speculating in currency is a losing game. You just want to protect your profit margins. And so the insurance provided by a forward or a window forward is a very, a very good way to, to do that. Um, so I've sort of shot through this, covered, covered it. And I, I'd like to see if, if we have any, any questions. Yeah, we have one question about managing risk. It's complicated with manufacturing and three to six month lead times on orders. Would it work the same way just uh, just out in the future that I answer? So yeah, so with manufacturing, absolutely. If if you're manufacturing product now and you think you're going to sell it in three to six months, you can and you have orders for your product, you can you can hedge your you can hedge your risk, your exposure based on what you think your, your orders will be. Um, so we've seen like with a lot of pieces of machinery and equipment that's sold internationally, um, it will, there will be several shipments related to it. Um, it uh, there can be the, you know, the main, the main components and then the setup and then replacement parts. It can be, it can be over a period of time or if it's a piece of heavy machinery that takes a long time to make. Um, and their discrete shipments. Each of those shipments can be can be invoiced as a separate amount and hedged accordingly. Um, so so yes, this is the, the 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 currency hedging works works fine for for manufactured products with long lead times. Yeah. So another question is just asking about the size of the the transactions. What 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 size order makes sense to to use a hedge? You know, typically orders over $10,000 or more are generally done with these types of hedging instruments. Um, when you get below that, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the movement, the volatility and the impact of a one or 2% movement on a, you know, on a $5,000 order isn't as dramatic, if you will, as it is on a $500,000 order or $200,000 order. But, um, 
what one of the things that you can do if you have a, a smaller exposure and you want to hedge is that that uh, you can sell it now or buy it now and hold on to it. Um, but uh, so, so if you have the cash flow, but but um, you know, so that's an option. You can just if if you have an invoice to pay three months from now and it's five thousand euro. It's too small for a Ford. You can buy that now and just hold on to it, but it does eat up your, your cash flow. So a question is asking, what happens if a shipment uh, needs to be postponed beyond the window that was selected? So that's a very good question. So uh, a forward can, if something like that happens where you have a window and the, there's going to be a need for uh, the transaction to extend beyond that window, you can roll a forward over. It can be extended. It can be rolled over. The price can be modified a little bit because you're changing the terms of it, but um, it, it can roll over. So, so yes, yeah, so that you, you know you have that flexibility to do that. And we have another question asking if these types of transactions work with a letter of credit. Uh, yes, they do. I mean, just if you just have to ex uh, be explicit about what the currency is of the letter of credit. A lot of letter of credits are are denominated in dollars, but they don't have to be. Yeah, so that's uh, another another good question. Yeah, I think generally being proactive and and taking taking you know taking a proactive view of invoicing in a foreign currency along with your U.S. dollar uh, invoicing makes you easier to do business with. You can easily hedge that to reduce the risk and. Um, and so you're 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 neutral in terms of you're going to get your ten thousand dollars one way or the other, and you've made it easier for your buyers to do business with you, and you've differentiated yourself from other American sellers, and you've you've matched what other foreign competitors are doing. You know that Japanese company shipping shipping to France, they're providing the dual currency invoice, and if all things are equal, you know, and the local buyer wants to pay euro, it's just easier to do it with the with the Japanese company. Uh, just because your your clients overseas, they're going to have more liquidity, more cash on hand in their local currency. It's it's a given. Just that's where they're primarily doing business. We have another question. Just asking about the types of industries that the that that uh, hedging can be done. So you know, we we deal in industries: aviation, automo automotive, uh, textiles, apparel, food, wine, um, travel travel even. Um, we've got antique dealers and all sorts of equipment and home home goods and furniture and construction. And, you know, it's across the gamut in terms of, of uh, the industries that this type of tool can be provided uh, for. It, but, you know, especially, you know, bigger ticket capital items, you, you know, where there's there's a lot on the line there that those are particularly uh, good for, for this type of solution. Yeah. So the question is saying, if I'm understanding this correctly, can a forward contract, you're guaranteeing your base amount of dollars, let's say, can you actually increase your profit if the currency fluctuates in your favor? Correct? Well, no, I mean, you're, what you're doing, you're, you're giving up an opportunity cost, either an opportunity cost, or an you know, or an op a lost opportunity or a gained opportunity, but you're, and this is what we always try to sort of encourage clients to think about this. You know, you're not in the currency uh, speculation game. You just, you have a product, you're selling it. You know, your product has a certain profit margin, and you're going to get that profit margin. So, three, two months now, or a month now, or three months now, if you booked a Ford and it comes due you know, the dollar euro is going to be higher or lower and it's just an opportunity cost. So if it's, if it's a lot, you know, if it's moved in your favor, you say, Oh gosh, I should have just waited and just sold, sold my euros uh, at the better rate today. Uh, that's an opportunity cost. Or you could say, well, gosh, I'm glad I, I hedged it because if I had just sold my euros two months from now at a worse rate, I would have had a big loss. So you're not getting, you're just locking in your $10,000 and that's, you know, you're matching your P&L and your budgets and your profit margins and you're protecting those. You're, you're not playing the, the, the currency game uh, in terms of actual speculation. Um, 
because you've locked in you've locked in your cost. You've committed to selling a currency in the future at a rate set today. So whatever the rate is in the future, um, you know that's that that's you that's why you've hedged because you don't know what the rate's going to be in the future and you want to protect yourself. Yeah, so that's a, a good mix of questions. You know, we appreciate your your interest and the questions. Um, we have some additional information beyond here, just like definitions and things of the technicalities of forwards and how they work and things. So if you'd like a copy of this, I'm happy to make it available. We can do that through uh, through Shipping Solutions. Um, this this is just information about more sort of the the fine print, if you will, about some of the terminology around forwards. But um, you know, we appreciate your your interest. We encourage you to be open-minded about the dual invoicing to make it easier for your buyers to do business with you overseas and just to do it in a way that protects your profit margin. Thank you very much.